how much range can you actually get on pure electric power then? But what about longer passages? Or if the sun isn't shining and the wind dies, is there a backup? How does the new Windolo 50 actually perform under sail? Is it just an eco cruiser or does it move? What's out there? Sails up high. All right, Boat React crew. Today we are diving into the new Windolo 50 yachting, a catamaran that's creating quite a buzz in the sailing world. Yeah, it really is. What's really got people talking, I think, beyond its good looks, is how Windolo is blending serious performance with a real commitment to being, well, eco-conscious. Absolutely. Windolo, I mean, they're a relatively new shipyard, right? Founded in 2020. That's right. And they've made sustainability uh, a core principle right from the very start. Mm. This isn't just some marketing angle either. They're genuinely trying to build blue water cruising catamarans that are both, you know, environmentally responsible and a real joy to sail. And the new Windolo 50 yachting is the latest step in that journey, isn't it? Building on the original Windolo 50 from 2021. Exactly. An upgrade. So for our listeners, and we've got seasoned sailors and folks just starting out, what are the key new features? What technologies set this particular boat apart? Well, I think one of the most uh, uh, groundbreaking aspects is their innovative approach to how the boat is actually built. Mm -hmm. They're using this unique composite material. Think of it like a high-tech sandwich. Okay. Made with basalt fiber, which you know, comes from volcanic rock. Wow, okay. Volcanic rock. Yeah. And PT foam, which is derived from recycled plastic bottles, mostly the ones you drink water from. Volcanic rock and recycled plastic. Yeah. yeah. That's a pretty unconventional mix. So what's the big advantage of using these materials? Is it just weight or...? Well, the main benefit, the headline figure is a significant reduction in the boat's carbon footprint. We're talking around 47% less than if they used traditional fiberglass. 47%, that's huge. It really is. And it's not just the hull. This eco-friendly composite is used throughout the boat, interior fittings, furniture, even the floors, which, as you said, also helps keep the weight down. Right. And they also use FSC-certified wood inside, making sure it comes from responsibly managed forests. So it's not just about looking green on the surface. They're really digging deep into the whole life cycle of the materials. It sounds like they've uh, really done their homework finding sustainable alternatives. They absolutely have. They even partnered with research institutions like Mendeley to rigorously test these materials. Yeah. Oh. You know, making sure they are strong and durable enough for offshore sailing. Basalt fiber, for instance, it offers excellent vibration resistance, great strength, and actually better fire and heat resistance than traditional materials. Plus, it can be recycled. That's impressive. Better performance and recyclable. Exactly. And using that 100% recycled PT foam, well, it significantly reduces the emissions associated with its production compared to conventional PVC foams. What's really innovative here isn't just using recycled stuff, you know. It's the clever combination right. of these quite different materials to get both the environmental wins and better material properties. Yeah. It sort of signals a potential shift in how we think about boat construction, maybe. That's fascinating. And it's good to know that these eco-conscious choices also offer real-world benefits for sailors, like performance and safety. Okay, let's shift gears a bit. Let's talk about the design. The new Windolo 50 definitely has a sleek, modern look. What are some of the key visual and maybe functional design changes? Yeah, they've made quite a few improvements. The decks, the superstructure, the roof, and the overall layout have all been tweaked. Okay. For example, the aft deck is now larger, gives you a more comfortable area for relaxing, and it offers better protection from sun and rain. Always welcome. Definitely. Okay. The deck molds are completely new, too, creating smoother surfaces. And they've integrated the non-skid directly into the mold, which should make it more durable. It's got this kind of diamond pattern, quite it's smart. It's a rated non-skid. Interesting. Yeah. And the coach roof has been redesigned. It's got this sort of wave theme, looks more streamlined. And they've improved the drainage channels. Less spray, less noise, hopefully, when it's wet. Even the rear platform and the sugar scoops look a bit more elegant. An enlarged aft deck. Better drainage. Yeah. Sailors will appreciate that. But for those of us actually sailing these boats, what are the practical design changes that really stand out? What makes a difference day to day? I think one of the most notable things is the forward cockpit. It's located right at the base of the mast. Okay, up front. Yeah, and this centralizes basically all the lines for controlling the sails. Makes it safer, much more convenient to handle the boat, especially if you're sailing shorthanded. Right, keeps everything contained. Exactly. And this cockpit, it can also be 
completely closed off. Mm -hmm. So you get great protection from the weather, you know, wind and spray. They've even added these raised edges combing Mm -hmm. around the area to blend it in visually and make it feel more robust. Mm. So it's not just a seating change. It fundamentally alters how you can sail a cat like this shorthanded. All the control right there in a protected spot. It's a real boon for cruising couples or maybe even solo sailors. The protected central control station. Yeah, that sounds like a bit of a game changer for managing a big catamaran. What about the living spaces? I heard there's some flexibility there. Oh, absolutely. The main living area, the nacelle, it's, it offers incredible flexibility between inside and out. These large opening sections at the back, they essentially disappear. They slide away. Yeah, they slide away or lift up, turning the saloon into this huge open air terrace. Great for ventilation too. Nice indoor outdoor living. Totally. And then the exterior cockpit just after the mast that has two steering stations, good visibility, easy access to all the controls. And they've really tried to emphasize blurring the lines between inside and outside everywhere on the boat. So? Well, even down to this clever platform at the stern davits, it folds out and becomes like a deck extension when you're anchored. More space again. Ah, neat trick. Yeah. And the rear cabins also feature these large angled windows or portals. They sort of eliminate the corner where the side meets the back, making the cabins feel much bigger and brighter, even though the hulls are relatively slim for performance. So a real focus then on creating versatile, comfortable spaces for living, whether you're sailing or just hanging out at anchor. Okay, now a key part of Windelow's whole identity is their electric propulsion. What's new on the new 50 in terms of power? Right. It still features two 20-kilowatt electric motors, Mm -hmm. the shaft drive ones, but they've significantly upgraded the renewable energy systems feeding them. Ah, okay. More power generation. Yep. It now has a larger lithium battery bank, 1120 away at 48 volts, and much more solar power. We're talking over 530, 800 watts of panels now. Wow, that's a lot of solar. It is. And it also has a more efficient hydro generation system. Mm -hmm. The props regenerate power while you're sailing, and you can add wind generators, too. It's a substantial battery bank. It allows for, you know, significant off-grid living. And silent motoring. And those, yeah, up to four hours of silent electric motoring at about six knots, which is just lovely in a quiet anchorage, isn't it? Oh, yeah. More solar and better regeneration. Always plus for energy independence on a cruising boat. How much range can you actually get on pure electric power, then? Well, the estimate is that four hours at around six knots, just using the renewable sources, assuming conditions are right, they've actually boosted the energy gain from the solar by about 27% compared to the previous model. 27% increase. Okay. And that hydro generator, it's like having, well, reverse wind turbines, but underwater. As you sail, the water flow spins propellers connected to generators, feeding energy back into the batteries. It's a fantastic way to passively recharge on longer passages could potentially fully recharge the bank in a good day's sailing, maybe 10 knots or so. That sounds like a great way to minimize reliance on fossil fuels for sure. But what about longer passages? Or if the sun isn't shining and the wind dies, is there a backup? Yes, absolutely. There's an 18 kilowatt backup diesel generator. It's got a decent 500 liter fuel tank, giving you a theoretical range of uh, around 1,100 nautical miles when you need it. Okay, so the belt and braces approach. Pretty much. And it's smart, too. It starts automatically if the batteries get too low or if you suddenly draw a lot of power for some reason. So you've got that backup for peace of mind, which is important offshore. And I imagine there's some sophisticated tech on board to manage all this energy generation and consumption. Oh, definitely. It has a comprehensive boat management system. It integrates pretty much all the boat systems. Like a central brain? Kind of, yeah. It gives you clear information on how much energy you're producing, how much you're using, the status of all the equipment pumps, lights, everything. And you can control it, all electric motors, check tank levels, right for the navigation screen through an easy-to-use interface. Right. So you can really keep a close eye on your energy footprint and manage things efficiently. That level of integrated tech sounds fantastic for managing the boat's systems. Okay, crucial question for the sailors listening. How does the new Windelow 50 actually perform under sail? Is it just an eco-cruiser or does it move? No, it's designed to move well. The slender hold design and that relatively lightweight, about 11.2 tons, mean it performs well even in lighter winds. Reportedly, it can sail at the speed of the wind in those conditions. Sailing at wind speed in light air, that's impressive for a cruising cap. Yeah, and sea trials have shown it can comfortably maintain speeds above 7 knots when sailing upwind, Close hauled in moderate breezes, say around 13 knots apparent. Mm-hmm. And it tacks efficiently too, doesn't lose too much speed through the maneuver. 
good to hear it's not just a green machine, but a capable sailing vessel, too. That's important. And what about safety features? Anything notable there? Yes, a couple of things. It includes reinforced sections. Uh, crash boxes at the very front and back of the hulls. Ah, sacrificial bows, basically. Sort of, yeah. Yeah. Designed to absorb impact and help prevent major water ingress if you were to hit something substantial. And, as we mentioned earlier, having all the sail controls led back to that central forward cockpit. Right, the safe zone. Exactly. That makes sail handling much safer and easier because you just don't need to move around on deck nearly as much, especially in rougher conditions. It really sounds like Windelo has taken a very holistic approach with this new 50, really focusing on that sweet spot where environmental responsibility meets good sailing performance and um, comfortable onboard living. Exactly. That seems to be their core philosophy. Uh It's built around innovation, performance, comfort, and, of course, ecology. Mm -hmm. They're really aiming to be at the forefront of eco-friendly boat building. Pushing the boundaries. While still delivering high-quality, enjoyable cruising catamarans that have a distinct modern look. Mm. And the fact that they have a growing order book, apparently extending into 2025. Wow. It suggests that their vision, this blend of green tech and sailing pleasure, is really resonating with sailors who are looking for a more sustainable way to explore the oceans. It definitely sounds like they're making a significant contribution to, well, the evolution of eco-conscious sailing. The new Windelow 50 yachting with its innovative materials, that adaptable design, efficient electric propulsion, it really does offer a compelling glimpse into the future of blue water cruising, doesn't it? It certainly does. It raises yeah. interesting oh. questions about where boat building is headed next. Indeed. Lots to think about there. Okay, that's our deep dive for today. Until next time, fair wind and following. Watch out